What Funko lines are going to the landfill? If they keep overproducing, all of them. In Funko's quarter two earnings call, they talked about cutting down on the Funko lines that they are producing currently. And I wanted to talk about what lines we think will be cut down because you know there's a lot of garbage out there that Funko loves to produce. Yeah, do you want to know how I know that? Because it's sitting on the shelves all the time. It is, and we're actually talking about Funko product lines and not licenses. A lot of people think we're talking licenses like Marvel and Disney, but no, we're talking about lines like Funko Pops, Funko Sodas, and even Funko Rewinds. These little guys right here. Yeah, they're awesome. And if you watched yesterday's video, you saw that Heather spent $333 on new Funko Rewinds. It wasn't that much. I think Heather is literally the only person who bought rewinds yesterday because Funko put up rewinds on their website and it appears that they're going full bore with their Funko rewind soda. I call them sodas. Funko rewind sodas. They're not sodas. That looks like a soda, Heather. Mm -hmm. It looks like a soda. It's just a smaller soda. It's just a smaller soda, Heather. I Don't you understand? I really hate when people say that because they're not sodas at all. He stands, he's narrow, it, it, and it fits in like a little packaging like this. Okay. It's 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 the same it's the same thing. No. It's a soda but smaller with a weird face. Do you not see the weird face? Yeah, I'm looking right at it. But let's talk about some of the lines that Funko is going to slash right through. Now, first in the earnings call, they mentioned lanyards, which we really haven't seen very many of from Funko. So it sounds like that's going to get cut. And I'm wondering about specific pins. Are they going to cut back on the pop pins? All right, pop pins is a good place to start. Pop pins, right now, if you go to your local Game Stops or your Targets, you'll see pop pins are basically in bargain baskets. They cannot sell these things. And anywhere I go, I always look for pop pins and I always find like a huge stack of them that just do not move. So I'm thinking pop pins are going. Do you even give a f about pop pins? Do you care? No. No. Pop pins were a terrible idea. Funko should have just stuck with like little pins or something like that, but they were trying to compete with fig pins. And you're not going to compete with fig pins. They are cool, don't get me wrong. They're okay. But... That's all I have to say. Wow, okay. Funko Golds. Funko Golds might be the worst thing that Funko has ever produced since the rock candies. Okay, first, a lot of people do like rock candy. Like, a lot. There's a lot of rock candy collectors, and they're coming for you right now in the comments section. They got their torches, oh, come on. and they got their pitchforks, and even baseball bats. Trust me, they All are. All three of them. Yep. Funko Golds weren't too bad. Oh, come on, Heather. You can't say that with, until, you can't say that with a street face. Until they made a machine gun Kelly Gold. Okay, that's fine. But they're just not very good, and people don't care about them and they just sit on shelves. I've talked to a lot of the small Funko retailers, like the pop shops, and all of them have told me so far they just can't even get rid of these things. Yeah, now I would like to say that they have made some pretty cool ones, like the Guns N' Roses ones with the skull faces. Okay. Snoop Dogg with the dog face yeah, chase. Yeah, right, yeah. Those are a lot of fun, but outside of that, I don't really see much of a market for it just because they're always sitting on shelves. Shelves. It seems like the general consensus is that people don't really like them. And a lot of them are like sports themed, but they also have sports pops. So what's the point in making a whole other line? Exactly. And they look like Mr. Poopy Butthole from Rick and Morty. They do. But Funko should stick to what they know. Funko Pops, Funko Sodas. Now they're doing these rewind things. So Funko Golds are totally going to go. Like, there's no way that they're sticking around. Yeah. Funko lanyards, I think we all called that. Pop pins, of course. Uh, Funko f***ing lanyards. I'll be honest, I didn't really even know that they had enough lanyards to say we're cutting this whole thing. Based off the popularity of the rewinds, I have a feeling that they're going to be short-lived. I don't think these are going to be sticking around for very long. Personally, I love them, but... I also loved Dorbs, and we all know how that went. What's funny is that Dorbs had funny little smiles just like these guys. Yeah. By this time next year, we would have forgotten Funko Rewinds. That's what I'm thinking. What if they cut sodas instead, so now people have to go after the Rewinds? Oh my god, well. Do you think people would, like, be okay with that? You know, if they gave these, like, different facial expressions, instead they're giving them, like, these, what's the toy? We always say it. Playmobil. Like, Playmobil, yeah. If, if they gave them something different than 
a Playmobil face, then I think we'd be okay. But I think they're adorable. The, the Freddies are fine, but the I don't know. <sighs> Funko has to cut off a bunch of these lines because they're making all these products that are just sitting. And I think Funko really wants to focus on selling a lot of product. Funko Pop sell, Funko Soda sell, of course. It appears that Biddies are selling too. Those also seem very popular, and I think that's because people love the small size of them. They do, and I think what's going to be really cool is that you can sort of like scale the pops. Actually, I really like that idea because as we collect all these different pieces, like Funko Pops, Funko Sodas, and everything else in between, you end up filling up a lot of space. So biddies give you the opportunity to fill the spaces in between. Yeah, and it's almost like your pops can have their own little pop collection. I like that. I think that's pretty good. It's so corny. It's brilliant. But I love <laughs> Popsies. That's another one that's going to just go. It's gonna go, and I like Popsies. I think they're fun. They're easy little 3D cards, is how they I look at it. They are, but here's the thing. If you go to Target right now and you pick a card off the shelf, chances are it's five to eight or nine dollars. Seriously, that's how expensive they're cards expensive, because now you open them, they got songs playing, everything. Yeah, well, not even that. Like, those ones are probably even more expensive. I'm just talking about regular ass cards. You go and buy a Popsie, whoa, they're- Whoa, 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 What? What's a regular ass card? Is there an ass card? Yeah. You want to see mine? You can open it up. There's a message inside. Ew. <laughs> Is the song Brown Eyed Girl? <laughs> Seriously though, Popsies are what, like seven bucks or something? Yep. I mean, they're so adorable. They're interactive and I love them. I love Popsies and I wish more people would get on board, but I feel like maybe like the people that are browsing the pop sections don't really understand what they are. They think that they're just like little toys. They don't understand what they are. Yeah, you're you're right. If my grandmother walked into Walmart, say, and she went and grabbed one of those things, she wouldn't know what it was. She wouldn't understand why it's even there. It has the little message that you have to push a button to pop up and push down. So maybe a lot of people are unclear exactly what it is. Yeah, and not only that, you can't fit it in an envelope and mail it out. Exactly, that's a huge issue with it. I don't know, I love Popsies and I, I really really hope they don't go, but I understand that they probably will. It just sucks because they're just, they're just fun. When you see that Funko isn't marketing something and they're not constantly throwing it in your face, Funko Pops and Funko Sodas, which you're constantly doing, Loungefly, that's big business for them. So they're constantly showing you all that. You do not see a Popsies show up at San Diego Comic-Con. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. So Popsies are definitely going to go. They're not even talking about them anymore. You really don't even see any messages about them anymore. No more emails. They'll probably put them up on the website if they haven't already marked completely down. I feel like that's coming really soon. I think they're gone. Golds never pushed. You never hear anything about golds. I'm pretty sure they're gone. Pop pins, same thing, and, and lanyards, of course. I mean, honestly though, since we don't see the marketing, that's probably part of the reason that things haven't caught on. Bingo, and, and the same goes for Funko Games, which I hope it sticks around, but I have a really bad feeling about it. The Funko Games division is actually really great, and you as a Funko Pop collector don't even realize it exists probably. A lot of people just don't even know what's out there. You can go on Funko.com, you can go to Target, you can find all these games. In fact, there's Marvel Battle Worlds that has like little minifigures. Then there's the new Star Wars game that has minifigures Rivals, as well. Yeah. Rivals, which is fantastic. Funkoverse. Funko just doesn't tell anybody about any of this no. stuff, so they don't know it exists, so people don't go out and buy any of it. We should all be playing Battle World, and we should all be playing Star Wars Rivals. They're both very good games. Yeah, they are a lot of fun. So Marvel Battle World is a staple in our house. We absolutely love it here. It is so much fun to go and like hunt for the different characters. Like we have spent an entire like Saturday going to different game stops and targets. Yeah. Looking for different figures and it is so much fun. But the problem is if it's not properly marketed, no one's going to know about it. Now, do I think Funko Games is going away? No. I do feel like so much effort gets put into those games, so much thought, so much time goes into those games. I mean, just sculpting the little figures has to take forever. Oh, yeah. Not to mention coming up with the rules and everything for the games and all the designs on the little pieces and cards that go to the games. They would be stupid 
to get rid of all of that. They, they should just spend a little bit of money on marketing, tell people what it's about, maybe make a how-to on their YouTube channel and direct people to that, put a little QR code into the box, market it, market the hell out of them because those games are a lot of fun. My unfortunate thought though, Heather, is that they're not gonna do any of that and we're gonna see a lot of the Funko game stuff go away. And I hope that's not true because we do love them, but it just does not look good for a lot of these brands that people just don't know exist. Mm. Funko wants to chop off a lot of this stuff, go back to simpler times. They want to go back to like Mike Becker days. We're talking like old school shit. Stick to just a couple, maybe just a handful of different lines, not oversaturating the market, keeping it really simple. They want to keep it simple so they can then sell more. They can sell limited pieces again. They can also limit the amount of commons that are out in the world. Funko needs to sort of rein everything in, and I mentioned this in a previous video, and sort of keep it simple. They need to kiss it. Keep it simple, stupid. Thank you. One thing that I've seen people mentioning are Funko t-shirts. I do not think that those should go away. Those are a marketing tool and not only that, but they come up with some really cool design. Do I think the very large names of characters who are obviously in that image should go away? Yes. Like, if there's a Funko Spider-Man shirt, it shouldn't say Spider-Man! Like, if that's required to be on the shirt, maybe it should say, like, Spider-Man. I do think the clothing and the apparel and everything will stay. Yeah, I don't I know if it's going to be at the same level as it is now because they make shirts like constantly we don't even know exist. I go on Funko.com and I look at their apparel section. That's where I find out that they're making all sorts of shirts. I think Funko's biggest issue is that they do not market their product properly. They need to constantly be hitting us and letting us know that all of these things exist. How do we buy something if we don't even know that it exists? So one big question that a lot of people have been asking, NFTs. Are NFTs NFT is going to stick around after we hear that Funko is trying to axe some of this stuff. And the answer to that is no. Funko makes absolutely too much money from selling NFTs. They're making money in card packs. They're making money on the secondary market. They probably don't have to spend a really crazy amount of money in order to produce this stuff. I cannot imagine that Funko would ever think to get rid of NFTs. The only thing that I think is that they're going to increase how many NFTs they do. Possibly, however, with the recent up with the box of fun at fun days i feel like people might be more hesitant to trust funko and their piece counts and part of the allure actually i would say most of the allure with the exception of like really cool molds most of the allure has to do with the piece counts yeah people want rare limited pieces and a lot of those you can get only in the nft stuff i mean you get the occasional limited piece count but it's very rare these days it's more within the nft realm i think there's enough nft collectors that don't really give a about the box of fun debacle so they'll keep buying them i think it might make some people hesitant funko you need to come out and explain your limited piece counts i think that will definitely give the collectors slash consumers a little bit more confidence in what you're doing i think we need to understand exactly what to expect because right now everything is super confused the box of fun is a prime example you can put out a hey we're so sorry that this all happened and let us do something for you that's cool but give us an explanation of how it's not going to happen again in the future. That's really what we need. We need the confidence back into Funko. And I think that's what they're trying to do without saying it. Limiting everything, making everything smaller than it was before, more simplified, because it got so complex is the reason why everything is so topsy-turvy today. Yeah, things got like super confused and uh... too many lines, just too, too much everything. So since it got confused, if they bring it back and make it a little bit more kiss, then we'll be good to go. Keep it simple, stupid. Right. If you haven't already, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. We appreciate all of your support. It means the world. You know what Funko reminds me of these days? Bucky's. You can buy a Bucky's hat. Right. You can buy a Bucky's shirt. You can buy Bucky's peanuts. Yeah. You can buy Bucky's plush. Right. You can buy Bucky's hot sauce. Right. You can buy Bucky's swim trunks. Right. You can buy Bucky's keychains. Right. Definitely Bucky's lanyards. Right. Probably Bucky's board games. Right. You can buy the fudge, but I don't know if that's like actually Bucky, uh, like it at Bucky's, but is it like Beaver Bucky brand or is right. it just like their fudge? You can buy Bucky's wreaths, I think probably. You can buy Bucky's tchotchkes. You can buy Bucky's magnets. 
You can buy Bucky's underpants. You can buy, you can buy Bucky's crop tops. You can buy Bucky's bathing suits slash bikinis. You can buy Bucky's lawn flags. You can, you can buy Bucky's balls. Oh my God, I don't know if I can take any more. They even had a Bucky's tent when we were there. Oh my God, okay, yeah, you're right. And I Funko think, turned into Bucky's. You know what? Funko is the Bucky's of the internet. You can buy a Bucky's swim float, like for the pool. Like an inner tube? There was a shirt that was posted in our group. It said, I took a real big <laughs> at Bucky's or something. Yeah, at the Bucky's bathroom. <laughs> Let me tell you something about Bucky's bathrooms. Even if you take the biggest poop of your life, they're going to have it cleaned up within seconds. Oh my God, they will. Yeah. They have like the cleanest bathrooms of all I feel time. like somebody comes in with one of those firemen hoses and they just like <laughs> and they spray down the whole thing. Yeah, like no one would even know you pooped. As a matter of fact, they probably do that as you're pooping so it's cleaned up <laughs> before before you even know it. Like you don't even smell your own poop. Right. That's how fast they the clean it so is. quick, yeah. They do a good job on those bathrooms. I wish that all bathrooms were like that. Last time I was there, a guy wiped my ass. So Funko's cutting everything down. And I think those Walmart Funko sodas, remember the ones that had like the really high numbers or no numbers at all? Yeah. I think that's a thing of the past. No, I don't think so. I, I don't think they're gonna continue making them. The I think three liter sodas are now like no number. I know, but that was previous to this call and previous to this new business plan. That was in the big B's business plan. But I think we're gonna see all of that sort of shift within maybe a year's time and things be very different when it comes to Funko. I hope so because a big part of the draw of sodas are the numbers for people. Can you hear that? What is it? The trash trucks, can you hear them? They're lining up for all those Funko Golds. They're hauling them all away, baby. They're all going to their destination which is landfill! All right, before we go, we wanted to show you a couple things that we've unboxed. We had some friends send us some really cool sh Yes, I am so excited to see it all. No, don't just say cut that. that out. Just say, just say, hell yeah! Just get really close to the camera and do it. No, it's fun. Well, just do it. No, come on, it's funny. You like to make just me do go, wild. Hell yeah! Like that. Hell yeah! That was so stupid. I that know. was embarrassing. I know. So we got something very cool from our friend Jacob. So Chris brought this big box in from our PO box and I heard some rattling around and normally we wait until we're on camera to open things, but I thought something got broken and I was very concerned. So I opened it and no, nothing got broken. It was actually something that needed assembled. So prior to recording this video, we actually put it all together and it is so cool i cannot wait to show you but first he wrote us a letter oh okay and i'm gonna read it because you suck at reading dear chris and heather inside the box is a small token of my appreciation okay i'm gonna stop him right there because this thing is not small it is huge and then he goes into something that he's made for us but i'm not gonna tell you guys what it is yet because you just you just have to see it trust me i'm not great with words but i want to express my appreciation for everything that you guys do the two of you are constantly giving back to this amazing community of collectors. You have made collecting so incredibly fun for me and for so many others. Oh, that's awesome. Your hard work and dedication is a true inspiration. I find myself looking forward to every episode of the Gasselcast. You've helped raise my spirits and made me laugh on so many occasions. Thank you for everything that you do. Your friend and coven member, Jacob F. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you, Jacob. You're Thank awesome. Thank you, Jacob. So here it is. I've already plugged this thing in. It has a light built into it. Look at that. How cool is that? I love this. It is blinding me. It is. <laughs> but I love everything about this. This is so cool. This so, is like the coolest. This might make it to New York Comic Con with us yes. as a light that sits somewhere near where we're going to be. Well, I have the perfect spot, but that's only if we have like oh, somewhere we right. can plug it in. Power. Yeah. yeah. So I need to make sure that that can happen, but I definitely want to take this because this is so cool this is cool and i can't thank you enough for this this is amazing i almost want to make a place for it in our house but then i don't want to because i want to take it everywhere with us when we go on the road thank i love you it so much jacob thank you and also this was very easy to build because he sent it it's basically a frame and yeah, then you so have to he built the frame himself okay and then you have to put this part in there so he sent this part separately and you sort of had to tuck it in heather and i tried to tuck it in on the back of this thing yeah we on didn't the wrong side and it we looked up. horrible and i'm like what is going on and then we went on the front part where it's supposed to go and now it looks 
perfect. So again, thank you, Jacob. You are awesome. Yeah, so remember when I told you Chris doesn't know how to read? He didn't read the instructions very well. It's true. Okay, our friend Brian Dill sent us a box and I am so excited. This is such a great piece and it's something really great for your collection. It's a Bonnie Aaron signed nun. Oh my God. How incredible is this? This is my favorite nun pop. Yes. And just having it with her signature is so incredible. Yeah, because they made two different nuns, right? It was like one with like a regular face and then one with an angry face, if I remember correctly. Yeah, so this is her where she's like... Demonic. Yeah. Yeah, so creepy. there's two different versions of it. This is such a great Funko Pop, as Heather mentioned. And also now we have it signed. There's the JSA authentication and then they put the sticker there on the side that's cool so thank you brian dill for adding this to heather's collection for those who do not know heather has an extensive collection of signed horror funko pops yeah it's pretty impressive i don't really want to brag or anything but it's cool thank you brian i'm so excited to sit her on my shelf she's gonna fit right in. Fun fact, I have never seen any of those movies. I do not know a thing about that character, but I think that character is really cool. You're just stupid. Our friends Chris and Gabriel went to San Diego Comic-Con together and they also went to Universal and they said that they were going to get me something really cool from there. Okay. Hi Heather and Chris. I first wanted to say thank you for the amazing community you have created and all the content you make. Now to the contents of the box. Me and Chris went at Universal. We're sad when you said you wish you could be there too so we decided to get you something special hopefully you enjoy a wand from harry potter world a replica of sirius black's oh, wand oh wow that's cool it has my name on it it's engraved with your name i didn't even know you can do that now the other contents in this box is 100 percent all chris and i am sorry that he forced <laughs> me to include it in the box <laughs> Okay. Oh no. Shake and pour buttermilk pancake mix. Why the f is there ketchup? Chris informed me that he eats ketchup on his pancakes. And I told him that we can no longer be friends. We're not on speaking terms because of this monstrosity. That is disgusting. Well, I think he's now forcing me to eat ketchup on pancakes. Oh my God, that's horrible. Who does that? Chris, you are foul. And everybody tell Chris in the comment section below how disgusting he is. I know, we're having for breakfast tomorrow. Oh my God, I'm gonna throw up. Ugh. Okay, that doesn't look like what you think it looks like. Look at these bags the wands come in. Ollivander. Is that in Harry Potter world where they make them? Yeah, Ollivander's Wand Shop. 382 BC. Since 382 BC. That's pretty cool. Whoa. It does have my name. Wow, look at that. That is, wow, it's heavy. Like yeah. a lot heavier than I thought it would be. That's like the real deal. Look at that. And there's Heather written there or engraved there. That's beautiful. Thank you guys so much. I love these wands, they're so cool. I'm not a Harry Potter fan, but I always thought the wands that they make, you know, the, the recreations are so neat looking. Well, everybody has a different wand. They're made of different woods. They have like a different core in them. Yeah. They're different lengths and different colors. I always like looking at the different characters' wands because they're just so different from each other. Like this looks like it would be Sirius Black's wand. That's badass. Thank you guys so much for sending us all the fun stuff. Heather appreciates all the gifts. And thank you again, Jacob, for sending us that badass sign. We are totally gonna put it to use. Guys, what do you think about everything we talked about Funko-wise in this video? We'd love to know that and more in the comment section down below. And what do you think about all the things that Heather received? We'd like to thank you for staying until the end of the video. And we wanna shout out to some of our patrons from Patreon for being so awesome. Lewis Sutton, Jeremy Strecker, Nicholas Moser, BBB Meister 83, Past Tense 82, Noah Crisco, David Newman, John McCormick, DOE710 and Douglas Hunt. Thank you guys so much for your continued support. We appreciate all of our patrons. You guys rock.